And here we go. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor on a Friday morning. Cloudy outside, chilly outside. I love these kind of mornings. I really do. They're very nice kinds of mornings where you are able to say, oh, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to accomplish a lot today. And then you go right back to sleep and you say, ah. Oh, to hell with it. <laughs> Fridays are my days off. But I, I find that I end up working harder on Fridays. And it seems like clients wait until the very end of the week to come to me with with questions. And of course, even though it's my day off, clients always come first. That is life when you're in private practice, right? So... Listen, I was looking for content this morning to talk about on this podcast. And the more and more I looked at stuff, the the, the more upset I became. There is so much happening going on at the moment. We have the unemployment numbers coming out later this morning, or it might even be out by the time you hear this. But... So we have those coming out. We're not quite sure what it's going to say about the economy. If it's going to be, if uh, un- un- unemployment claims have gone up, or if it's gone down, we don't know. But we will know sooner or later. But one of the issues that I did see that really upset me, really kind of pissed me off, was. This morning, uh, they were running interviews of the Anne Hauser Bush or Bud Light fiasco, and they were interviewing the CEO. And the CEO, the, the, one of the problems with what has happened with Bud Light is that they offended a lot of the base core, the core base, I should say, of Bud Light, the the, the customers who drink Bud Light. And when they offended him, they never came back and said, oh, you know what, we made a mistake and we won't do it again. We will, It was a woke movement and we will never do it again. All that they needed to do to clean this up is just to apologize, say I'm sorry. But they didn't do it. So this is the comment that came out of the uh, CEO's mouth today. Quote, it was one can and not a campaign. <laughs> That's what the CEO uh, sidesteps any kind of an apology, makes embarrassing excuses uh, in a call to the investors of, of Anheuser-Busch. And he was addressing the Dylan Mulvaney Bud Light partnership. Now, if you... Think about this. Their VP was out there in the internet giving interviews, doing all sorts of different things to promote her partnership with Dylan, which was a bad partnership. Bad way to go. Yeah, it might have been one can, but that one can was used over and over and over again by Dylan Mulvaney and the VP of marketing for Bud Light. So to me, that's a campaign. If you see it multiple times and Bud Light and the parent company is is supporting it, endorsing it, that's a campaign. I hate to see unethical statements being made. Just say, I'm sorry. Just say, you know what? I'm sorry. We should never have done that. We, we are sorry that if you were offended... And move on and come up with a new campaign. But no, what did they try to do? They came up with some other campaigns that were used in the Super Bowl and everything else. Even those were offensive. People did not like that either. That was the beginning of the downfall of of Bud Light. Is they're not focusing on 
what they're selling. They're not selling a lifestyle. They're not selling transgender uh, 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 social politics. They're not selling that. That's not their job to sell. Their job is not to go out into the public and say, yeah, we support transgenderism. <laughs> no. And they're not supposed to use somebody who is a, a man who failed at being famous, so he became a woman to become famous. It's all a show. So we have a company CEO who won't do what is right. And that's the most important thing for any business. If they want to be a success, and whatever they are selling, whatever product or service they are promoting, when they've done wrong, they've got to come back and say, yeah, we did something wrong here. It won't happen again. You don't make excuses. You don't say it's not a campaign. When we saw it over and over and over again on TikTok, on Facebook, on Twitter, we saw it over and over. That's a campaign. When you see things multiple times, and yeah, you may have put Dylan's picture on one can, but that one can was used over and over and over. And there wasn't one can. We saw several cans. It's hard, isn't it, to understand why people just won't sit down and say, okay, gosh darn it, we we really effed up. But it's not going to happen again because now we know the feeling of what our customers want, of how they view things. You see, when companies become woke, they make really bad decisions. Wokeness offends the majority of Americans. And when you promote transgender, and when we see the violence of transgenders out there, and the threats that they're making, what kind of a positive... Even even Dylan said, anybody who says, I'm a man, should be put in jail, should be arrested. So we have an unethical type of situation here where violence and threats and freedoms are taken into attack by transgender social politics. So when Bud Light, let me get his exact quote, it was one can and not a campaign. Now it was more than one can because we saw it all over the place. Don't make an excuse. Your company made an error. They made a bad decision. It wasn't a mistake. I don't even want to hear the word mistake. You made a bad decision on the type of marketing that you put out there Becoming woke, even that, even the VP, that young VP the woman, said that she was proud of her work. She was proud of her campaign. She didn't like the the message it had before, <laughs> so she went woke. So if you think that by issuing an, issuing a statement that offends people even more, you just really effed up. Because that's not what the American people want to hear. So don't expect Bud Light to be around very much longer if that's the position that you're going to take as a CEO and as a company. And to tell that to the investors is really wrong. Because what you said to the investors has now gotten out onto the social media news outlets and you're looking worse than you did before. Gosh, I'm looking out my window at the moment and this beautiful red cardinal just landed on the tree in front of me. I have a bird bath that's right in front of my office window. And they use this for th- for taking drinks and also uh, washing themselves, washing their feathers. And they come in, I get bluebirds, I get bright red cardinals, I get uh, these uh, beautiful yellow finches that come in to drink of this. Thank God that it's not Bud Light because it'd be, they'd be 
flying into my window. <laughs> that was probably a bad example. But you have to understand that things like this, ethics is so important in business. And once you bend the rules and sound unethical and look unethical and lie at the same time and and say things that don't, uh, uh, it's just really creating an excuse of a bad decision that you had made as a company, it's much better for you to just stand up and say, okay, we did something wrong here and we will correct it. And I hope that you will forgive us and that you will come back to us. But if you're going to continue coming out and making statements like, it was only one can, (laughs) you sound stupid. I tell you, we have a lot of stupidity going around in this world. If you look at the politicians, and if you look at the corporate leaders, if you look at the disgusting thing that we're going through with the banking crisis, we're in trouble. Because we can't sit down and say, okay, what did we do wrong? And let's fix it. No, they have to keep pointing fingers at people. And they have to keep making up excuses. And they have to, and they, and they lie to us. Biden and the Federal Reserve chairman both came out and said, no, the banking system is, is fine. It's, it's solvent. It's good. And, and just a few minutes after that, less than 30 minutes after that, banks begin to fail and go down. Now, I said yesterday that I thought that by Saturday we would see the FDIC going in and taking over some banks. I don't know what's going to happen now because now there's a a sideline to this that says that people who are hedging against the banks might be manipulating the numbers. So now I'm not quite sure exactly in which direction we're going to go here Are they just coming up with an excuse to prolong the agony of failed banks a little bit longer? Or was there an actual people who are hedging or betting against the banks who are manipulating the numbers? Do we have an issue there? So my Saturday quote might be put on hold for a little bit until I do a little bit more study on what's going on and what the SEC is doing, because now the SEC is involved and they're doing an investigation. So, I tell you, I look at this and I say, what has happened to our leadership? Well, we have to come out and we can't just just address the problem and take in and focus on the problem and resolve the problems. Instead, we make excuses. And we see this coming down on the debt ceiling also, from the White House, where they are making excuses of not wanting to sit down and negotiate. We have no leadership. Leadership addresses the issues. They sit down, they negotiate, and they address the issues, and they resolve them, and they come up with a plan. That's all that we're asking for as Americans. Just show us what is right and what is wrong, and how you're going to correct it, and how, what is your plan on going forward. That's all that we want to hear, and we want to see results. But we don't have any leadership, so we're not getting any results. Listen, if you would like to send me a business question, send it to thebusinessadvisor at zmail.com. And if you would like to sit down confidentially and talk about business issues, you can go to my website at www.lodge-co.com. Everybody go out and have a great day. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye.